Welcome, welcome everyone to Europe 1973. This is episode three, France. Today, Richard and David are in France and on our motorcycles. I've created this YouTube channel to post memories about 1973, the most significant year of the 20th century to some. Check the description below for links to the other episodes. And right in the middle of 1973 is this little summer vacation that Richard and David took 50 years ago from June 11th to August 31st. There will be five episodes in all covering the trip in the summer of 1973. And in each episode, I insert some history. The events in America and around the world are amazing. And after the episodes for the summer, I plan to post a prologue and an epilogue to cover the year before and the year after 1973, the summer of 73. 1973 really was a very significant year for me personally. But today is episode three, France. Let's get started. On July 6th, 1973, at the end of episode two, we're loading our motorcycles and gear onto a ferry in Dover, England for the short ride across the Strait of Dover to France. We're headed to Paris, embracing ourselves for a new country and a new language. Language barriers can be an obstacle for tourists. For us, Iceland and the British Isles were fairly easy. However, with France looming ahead of us, we wanted to overcome the barrier that the French language poses to many English speakers. So we memorized a simple phrase in French that we used to start every conversation in France. Je ne sais pas français. Translation, I don't know French. Je ne sais pas français. When we would say that phrase, the French proved to be very welcoming, warm and helpful, and they did not seem to resent our ignorance of their language at all. Bookmark that French phrase if you are planning a visit to France. Je ne sais pas français. And please forgive my attempts to pronounce French terms that are in this video. I plan to mainly use Americanized pronunciations. Well, we also quickly learned that the French people absolutely love motorcycles and motorbikes of all kinds. So with our special French phrase and our motorcycles, we were really ready for France. Let's stop in our trip here to talk about the European Union and the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom joined the European Union on January 1st of 73, the first enlargement of the European Union from six to nine member states. Today, there are 27 member nations, and that's accounting for the British exit from the European Union that took place on January 31st of 2020. That's Brexit. Following Brexit, the European Union law and the Court of Justice of the European Union no longer have primacy over British laws. The British relationship to the European Union is a hot topic in 2023. When we landed in France, we met two other guys from the States who were also on motorcycles. We agreed to ride together to Paris. I'm sorry to say that we can't give you their names. I've long since forgotten them. Maybe these YouTube videos will reach one of them at some point. I would really love that. We headed south to Boulogne. July 6th was our very first night camping out. We reached Paris on July 7th and spent five nights camping out right here. This campground was located in a suburban setting right on the banks of the Seine River in Paris. Here we get a glimpse of our buddies in the campsite. We weren't exactly comfortable with camping yet. 
It took me several days to get comfy with the camping routine, sleeping in a tent, communal showers, toilets, the shopping, the cooking and cleaning, packing and unpacking at every new campground. But after some time, it just began to feel normal. We did take trips into Paris, of course. That's where the sites are. Here, the iconic avenue of Champs-Élysées, which connects the Arch of Triumph with the Place of Concord. Champs-Élysées means Elysian Fields, the paradise of Greek mythology. The 3,000-year-old Egyptian obelisk of Luxor is at the east end of the Champs-Élysées at the place of Concord. The obelisk once stood across from its twin at the portal of the Luxor Temple in Thebes, Egypt. Today, its twin remains in its original location in Egypt. The gift of the obelisk to the French people was made in the 1830s. Here, the fountain and the obelisk in the same shot and here we have a shot of the four of us in front of the fountain and another shot that Richard took. Here the obelisk with the Eiffel Tower in the background. We did visit the Eiffel Tower, but have only a couple of shots related to that visit. Here we can see the gardens of Tradec Trocadero Park, which is immediately across the Seine River from the Eiffel Tower. The shot of the park from the tower. We did visit Notre Dame, the great cathedral in Paris. And I suppose that no narration is really needed for this iconic cathedral. We visited the Louvre, the great museum in Paris, and again, no words needed. Just enjoy these images from in and around the Louvre in Paris, France. We left Paris on July 12th. Richard and I wanted to spend some time in and around Bordeaux, France. We chose a campground about 40 miles west of Bordeaux on an inland lake, not far from the Atlantic Ocean. Our cycling buddies had other plans, so they split. On July 12th, we camped about 170 miles south of Paris. On July 13th, we reached our campground called Bomb Bands, located on Lake Horton Carcan, the largest freshwater lake located entirely in France. When we entered the campground, we were greeted by a group of children who were so excited by our motorcycles. They ran alongside shouting, is there a la moto? And we were in a campground that was so beautiful and peaceful. We ended up staying for six nights we met this French 
excuse me, this Dutch family who helped us to settle into the camping routines and allowed us time to make plans for the next leg of our adventure. This little guy really looks good on my bike, doesn't he? While we stayed at Bombans, we made some side trips. The big one was to Cognac, a round trip of about 150 miles. Here we have the two shots of, in Cognac of the Hennessy Distillery. If you've made it this far into the video, you are amazing. Don't leave now. The events on July 16th and July 17th, 1973 are featured next. Then we will get back to our trip and finish at the border with Spain. Don't leave now. On July 16th, Alexander Butterfield testified to the existence of the White House taping system before the Senate Watergate hearings. Butterfield's dramatic testimony, which lasted only 30 minutes, changed the course of the Watergate investigation and triggered a constitutional crisis. Within hours of Butterfield's testimony, Alexander Haig, White House Chief of Staff, had the White House taping system removed. On July 17, 1973, a swiftly executed coup resulted in the overflow of the monarchy which had lasted for 200 years and the establishment of one-party government which led, was led by former Army Commander Lieutenant General Daoud Khan. Two days after the coup, both the Soviet Union and India recognized the new government. In 1978, Khan was overthrown and killed during the Saar Revolution, a much bloodier change of power. The new regime pushed hard for socialist reforms. Anti-government revolts began in October of 1978 and the country descended into guerrilla warfare. In December of 1978, USSR entered Afghanistan, citing the Brezhnev Doctrine as the basis for intervention. The Soviets remained in the country fighting for nine years, finally withdrawing in 1989. Instability and war have been the legacy of Afghanistan ever since, even to this, to, to this day. Today, Afghanistan faces a humanitarian crisis of epic proportions. Challenges include food insecurity and famine, terrorism, the fractured economy, and the plight of women due to the Taliban's curtailment of education and work for women and girls. 1973 really was a significant year. Now, back to our trip. We left the lakeside campground on July 19 with Italy as our next goal. We stopped along the way at some points of interest. Unfortunately, I can't provide a name and place for all of the following shots. I wish I could. I wish Richard was here to help me get those facts right. Richard let me hold the camera for this shot at the town of Roquefort. On July 19th, we camped at Air Sur de la Dor, a town of about 6,000 people located 175 miles from where we started that day. This shot is from there. On June 20th, we headed south. We were approaching the Pyrenees Mountains and the frontier between France and Spain. This shot is from the village of La Rune, about 20 miles from the border. We knew just a bit about the Spanish dictator, Francisco Franco, head of the fascistic Francoist state since 1939. Franco was still in power in the summer of 73. When we reached the border, we encountered a checkpoint where there were two uniformed border officers. We were asked to get off of our bikes and wait. Naturally, we thought that our bags were going to be searched. One of the officers went into the border station and returned carrying a camera. He handed the camera to the other officer mounted Richard Spike and had his picture taken. When he dismounted, he said, carry on, have a nice trip. <laughs> Very relieved, we headed toward our campground on the Spanish side. Episode four is next, see you then. 
I hope that you're enjoying Europe 1973, the trip and the history. It really amazes me how the events of 1973 are connected to our current events today, 50 years later. And I'm also seeing a connection, personal connection, between 1973 and 2023. We camped every night while we were in France. My knapsack had my paperback Bible and a flashlight. And camping gave me a lot of quiet time, quality time. As a babe in Christ, I really needed that. And 50 years later, even more so. Next is episode four, The Road to Venice. Hope you're on the bus. Join us. It'll post around August 5th. Please subscribe, like, and comment on this YouTube channel.